All right, how's it going, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Forward Thinking Founders, where we talk to founders about their companies, their visions for the future, and how the two collide. Today, I'm very excited to be talking to you, Alex Kolshinsky, who is one of the co-founders of Mesli. Welcome to the show. How's it going? Thanks, Matt. Not too shabby. How are you doing? Doing pretty well, just spending time on the thing I love the most, which is talking to awesome founders about, about companies, which is what we're doing here. So for people that ha- haven't heard of, of Mesli, haven't heard of your company, what are you working on? What's Mesli? We're building robotic restaurants that serve healthy fast food at great prices. So something you might be able to get at Chipotle or Sweetgreen for 10 or 15 bucks now, we're serving that for more like five or seven bucks. Well, this is cool. <laughs> this, is, this is awesome. So let's kind of have a few kind of basic questions. Um, are you, is the, um, what is, tell me about like the UX, like who uses Mesli? Do you like kitchens, like do kitchens hire you to make their stuff back end? Or like, do I just like hi, use it, like use a product like in my kitchen? Can you just walk me through like how someone can interface with your technology just to give us an overview? Yeah, for sure. So the way it works now is you place an order at order.mesley.com and you pick it up from our ghost kitchen in San Mateo, which still has our chef and cook making all the orders, but actually next week we are planning to plug in our robot. Now, longer term, the way this looks is that our robotic kitchens, we call them auto kitchens, live in shipping containers. So the whole thing is the shape of a shipping container, which also means that conveniently, it's almost exactly the shape of a standard parking spot. So these things are going to live all over the place in parking lots and parking garages. And so when you want a quick lunch or dinner that you don't have to worry about cooking, you can pull up the app or the website, put in your order, and then stop by the nearest auto kitchen and pick up lunch or dinner. This is super brilliant. I like, uh, I just like in thinking about all the possibilities, it kind of leads me to wonder like, what type, like, how did you get to this idea? I guess, in other words, like, what's the origin story here? And how did you come up with this, uh, with this, uh, this concept? Funny thing is, uh, I think a lot of people talk about the personal angle on these things. And it really was for us. Uh, it started out with me talking with Alex, uh, my co-founder at Stanford when we were at grad school, about how we just struggled to find food that we could both afford and didn't have to spend a lot of time cooking. Because being in grad school, we were both broke and super busy with research. And so neither spending 10 or 15 bucks going to the dining hall or Chipotle, nor spending a bunch of time cooking was really great for us. And so being entrepreneurially minded, we started digging into why this is a problem in 2021 America and or 2020 America at the time. And just realize that restaurants pass a lot of their costs on to customers. It's just expensive to run a physical restaurant. And so we realized that by doing this kind of thing, by making a prefab solution that's mass producible and totally autonomous, we could really bring the costs down and therefore bring the prices down too. And this may be something you may not have the answer to because it's like future looking, but I'm curious, like, is the is your kind of goal? for people to to just order from the app and then they just show up um, at one of these locations or is it almost so they don't even know how the food's being built. I guess like the, the real question is, do you want people to know that it's like being built by robots or does it not even matter to you as long as the food is great? Like, you know, that's kind of all that matters. How do you kind of think about that? Yeah, we're really focused on getting the food right. And it does already taste great. You can stop by actually in uh, San Mateo. Uh, and sort of to serve it at that really great price point. And we're not being secretive about the fact that it's being made by robots or anything, but it's also not kind of a show, if you will. Um, We're not kind of one of these whiz bang companies whose uh, value is that you get to watch the robot make your food. It's much more about the fact that your food is gonna be great. It's gonna be half the price anywhere else. And by the way, it was made by a robot. Yeah, that's awesome. How do you kind of think about your day to day at this point? I mean, you're not building nothing against these. You're not building like basic software for basic things, right? This is like a pretty gnarly operation. What are you spending your time on a day to day? Like, are you are you coding software like then the robots making food like fundraising? Like what what's a day in the life for you? Yeah, it's actually pretty segmented between me and my co-founders, Alex and Max. They're spending their days pretty much day in and day out focused on actually building the robot. And a lot of that actually right now is just managing our orders with vendors. There's a lot of hardware that goes into a robot like this and making sure all the parts arrive on time is 
a huge struggle actually, especially when you're dealing with COVID, Chinese New Year, and all these winter storms in the Midwest all at the same time. And so the technical work on their end looks a lot like both juggling suppliers, but also doing the CAD work and literally putting things in place. And I do help them with that a little bit. Like I did a minimal amount of soldering this week, um, remembered how to do that. But most of my time is spent more on things like talking to investors right now because we're fundraising. Uh, things like literally managing the restaurant. Our chef, Eric, knocking it out of the park, but I also do stuff like responding to customer questions. And literally I'm going to deliver a catering order today. Uh, and so that kind of operational stuff uh, and just fighting whatever fires come up. Need to get us set up on DoorDash today. We had a really hard time getting our account up. They finally fixed it for us. So now it's time to actually get us set up on DoorDash. Yeah, I feel like oftentimes, sometimes being like a like running a early stage company is like you're like the CFFO, the chief firefighting officer, um, uh, which uh, which is you just kind of be, be, get bears out of the way for your team, right? Um, so I'm curious for you as you look out into the future, you know, five, 10, 15, 20 years, what do you see for, for Mesley then? Or I guess in other words, what's the big vision here and what direction are you rowing in? We think the really nice thing about the auto kitchens that we're building is that they can go everywhere. They're so much cheaper than a traditional restaurant that these things can be all over the place. And we're also building them in a way where they can serve a pretty wide variety of menus so that we can actually start doing a thing where let's say we have 10,000 of these deployed all over the country. At the same time, we might have, let's say 10 in-house brands. We might have our current Mediterranean brand. We might also have an Indian brand. We might also have a Thai brand. And each of these auto kitchens is gonna be able to serve any of those brands. And we have a system where we basically send stuff from upstream in our supply chain uh, and plug it into the boxes overnight, uh, the ingredients. And they're going to have digital billboards on the side. So we'll be able to update the branding dynamically. And so what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to create a lot of variety for our customers by rotating through the different brands, both on the level of each box at a time and just in the different boxes that are available in each metro area. And we might even start doing partnerships with chains, with celebrity chefs. So maybe you can even get your Chipotle burrito bowl through a Mesley box. And in order to make this happen and bring the vision to life, you'll need some help, right? It takes a village to make a startup work. So my question for you is how can the forward thinking founders community help? Are you looking for customers, looking for chefs, you know, looking for like for technologists, investors, you know, how, how can we kind of assist with, with what you're doing here? Yeah, I mean, we are on a fundraise right now. So for sure, if anyone's interested in investing, just reach out, uh, ak at mesley.com. But also, if anyone's in the Bay Area, please swing by and try the food. We're at uh, mesley.com and uh, serving lunch Monday through Friday in San Mateo. And then for my last question, if someone wanted to learn more about what you're doing, you just mentioned the website, but just making sure people don't miss it. What is the website? Are you on social media? Is there an email? You know, how, how can someone get in touch if they're interested? Yeah, we're uh, kind of all over the place on the web and social media. If you just Google Mesley, M-E-Z-L-I, you'll see us. Um, on the website, there's a contact form too. Cool. Well, thanks so much for coming on to the podcast. I think this is this is awesome. And I'm looking forward to seeing you build it out. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Thanks for having me.